How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install a lift kit on your Smart for Two using the Daystar kit. We are reading the directions because yeah, it's a little smarter. Also, I'm not doing it the smartest way, using a couple floor jacks and some jack stands. It'd be a lot easier if you had a lift. According to this, the things you're going to need are two jack stands, a wheel chuck, a floor jack, a hammer, T25, T30, a ratchet, 12 inch extension, and a wobble extension. Something is printed here in the picture, so I can't exactly read what it says. Uh, sockets 10, 13, 17, 18, and 19 millimeter, and wrenches 13, 14, 17, 18, and 19. So far, I've been struggling. I tried to uh, do the, dry, or the passenger side by myself, which I did, to learn how to do this so that I didn't seem like a complete idiot on the camera, although I already am an idiot. And I'll show you what I did so far, and I'm gonna put the camera on a stand and kind of take you guys through what I'll be doing on the other side. I'll probably speed it up and kind of go over what I'm doing. So with this kit here, you actually put that block on top of the spring, which sits here on the wishbone, and you unbolt the factory shock first to do that. So you unbolt the factory shock, you have your jack underneath the wishbone here to keep pressure on it so you don't drop the whole unit down as one. Once you take that bolt out, you can lower it down. It is a little bit of a struggle to get the spring off its little isolator down at the bottom and at the top. And you also, when you pull the spring out, you're gonna loosen. There is a uh, star bit, but you can use a 12 point, 12 millimeter socket to take that out. And you will uh, lower that down with your floor jack. If you have two, it works a lot easier. Lower that down with your floor jack and you're going to put a spacer up on top and in that spacer you're going to add a sleeve that they have supplied in the kit and there goes a washer actually in between the spacer and the sleeve according to the uh, directions and a 10 millimeter uh, thickness bolt that goes in there it is a 17 millimeter to put that cross member back in like i said i've done the passenger side here just to figure out what's going on so I can show you guys better on the other side. So let's go over there. All right, so on here, we are going to loosen the bolt here and a bolt up here in the cross member for the suspension. These are actually a, 12, or a star style bit, but you can use a, a 12 point socket and I'm using an 11 millimeter uh, 12 point socket right now to get these loose. I'm going to use my impact to pop these off just so I don't smash my knuckles with the ratchet and get these loose. Also, be mindful you put your floor jack underneath this rear wishbone. Just put that under there to keep any kind of pressure off of it so it doesn't shoot down on you when you loosen it. And that won't fit. All right, we got those two bolts out. Now we're gonna use the pry bar and pull down on this. It is gonna be a struggle to get these out, like I said, because they've been in here the whole time. This car's only got 40,000 miles on it, but it's been a hard 40,000 miles. And now, it's out. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the floor jack to the other side on the wishbone here. I had it on this side when I put that side in. It kind of relieves some of the pressure since this whole wishbone flexes under the car. Now, as you can see, we've got a good amount of flex in this now, so it'll make this going in a little bit easier. Trying to move you guys over here, give you a better angle. All right, forgot that I had the lift block over here. And you'll see I'm not using the same spring I took out. This is actually an EV spring off the electric model has a stiffer spring rate which gives a little bit more lift in the back uh, it was uh, one that was recommended by a gentleman named Joe Guzman had uh, a yellow one of these called Little Big Tonker for a while and now Little Big Smart owns it and I think they call it Little Bumblebee or something check them out on Instagram uh, Little Big Smart is the place a lot of people go to for their smart car lift parts so I'm gonna take this little block here that's gonna go above here and there's this little shim that goes inside here. It's a tight fit, so I'm gonna just tap it in with a hammer, or this one actually just went in by pushing it with my fingers, but I think that was the wrong shim. So I'm gonna go double check the shims. Yep, it was the wrong shim. So I got the correct one in here now. Push that down. It's nice and flush with both sides. And once it's sandwiched in, it'll also be nice and tight. And you're gonna need a washer. It's gonna go underneath here like this. And it goes in there but i'm gonna put the spring in first along with the lift block because it is a pain so the lift block is actually angled so it says to angle it towards the front of the car and it's actually printed on the top front so we're gonna put it in there actually like this i'm gonna reuse one of our isolators at the bottom of the spring place it in there like so on the bottom and drop that dealio on the top there. So we're gonna struggle to get this in. Okay, it's not very stable. The car is actually rocking on the jack stands now, so I'm going to turn the camera off a minute and try to regroup myself. All right, if it sounds like I'm winded, I am, mainly because I was working too hard and I'm fat, but I got it in. Not the safest way, so I didn't do it on camera. Like I said before in the first part of the video, if you have a lift, this makes it so much easier, and if you have friends that can help you, definitely buy this some pizza and Mountain Dew. So what I had to do, since I already had the other side in, it was super easy to get the other side in without the blocks in there. And I had to jack up the other side, which I'll show you. As you can see, we have the floor jack under the wishbone and we have the suspension pretty much collapsed on itself to give us enough pressure for this torsion bar set up back here with the two lower control arms. I had to put the block in up top there and once I did that I had enough flex. I was actually putting my foot right here and pushing down with all 240 pounds of me to rock it enough that I could fish that spring and that block in there. If I was using the factory blocks, I think it would, or the factory springs, probably would have been a little easier because I can compress those by hand. These ones right here are a little hard to do. But I have the block installed correctly, facing forward like it said, and I've got the shock still loose here. Final step on the rear lift installation are these shock extensions, and they require a hole to be drilled in the rear wishbone. They are a 3 8 hole. Drill through there. And there's a nut that goes on 
The back side up in here, I got my 17 millimeter end wrench up in there with some tape around the nut. So I was able to get it started. But there's that bracket I was talking about for the steering or the uh, shock extension. Gonna tighten this down and put the shock on and this side will be all set. And I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. One thing I'd like to note in the instructions for the kit, when you put these shock extensions in, they show that you reuse this bolt right here from the factory where the factory shock goes here, actually up in here. It fits a lot nicer if you put it down here and then use the new supplied hardware bolt and nut and put it here. There's not gonna be a lot of room on the other side, so you're gonna wanna fish the nut down in there first before you get started. As you can tell, I can barely get my finger in there, but if you take the wrench and put it down in here, with the nut on it, you can get it threaded in pretty easily. Unfortunately, I don't have four hands to show you that, but I'll pick it up here in a second when I get that in. So this side is in and ready to go. I'm gonna go over to the other side since you guys really don't need to watch me do both sides and put it together and the back end of the lift will be completed. Got the back completed on the smart car for right now. I'm gonna break this video up into two parts so it's not too long and bore everybody. But the back end is all set. We actually got my brother's uh, paddle tires from his Miata sitting on here right now. I did order a set of adapters to take it to a four by 100 millimeter bolt pattern. They are not sitting under their own weight just yet because tires are not aired up. But just wanted to give you an idea of how it's gonna sit. I got the adapters in there. And that's about where we're going to be sitting uh, tire wise when we put the new wheels on. I'm actually getting his uh, old set of uh, rims and tires from his lifted Miata that we're going to run on here. Stay tuned for part two on how to lift the front. We're going to customize the lift kit just a little bit and hopefully everything works correctly. Look where the front end is already torn apart as you can see and Hopefully it goes a lot easier than the rear. That was not a lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned.